Councilor Donato. Councilor Donato. Oh, I'm sorry. Present. Councilor Felka. Present. Councilor Feltner. Present. Councilor Canellas. Present. Councilor Palumba. He's not going to be here this evening. Uh, Councilor Picciarelli. Present. Councilor Woodmiller. Present. 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 Councilor Bays. Present. President Sedaris. Present. Please rise for the Pledge of Allegiance. The Pledge of Allegiance is the flag of the United States of America and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you. The next item is public forum. Uh, nobody has signed up, but if someone didn't make it in time to sign up and would like to speak, I'll recognize you at this time. Seeing none, we move on to the examination of minutes. Oh, I'm sorry. Oh. I didn't know please I was identify, invisible. Please identify yourself. Michelle Kokenauer, 37 Paul Street. Um, so I know that tonight the uh, joint committee Joint Committee on um, Public Works and Rules and Ordinances is going to be reading the minutes on the discussion of trees. Uh, so I just wanted to make a comment about that. So I was at both the October 15th and July 10th meetings. Um, and I found what was presented on July 10th actually very, very disappointing. Uh, the department had eight and a half months to come up with an action plan. And a goal was stated that was presented at that meeting on the, on the 10th, that 250 trees would be planted over the next, each year over the next 10 years, but there was no plan presented as to how this would be accomplished, other than to say the, the forestry division will plant as many trees as possible. Uh, there was also no focus area indicated. There was a document presented detailing Watertown's tree planting request program, which is something that's been in place for a long time. And it was also expressed that there was hope that more residents would request tree plantings, but there was also no public outreach plan presented as to how that would be accomplished. Um, I just felt that what was presented should not be acceptable work and should really be setting the bar a lot higher as to what is acceptable. Thank you. Anyone else? Next item on the agenda is the examination of minutes. Can I get a motion on the minutes of July 9th, please? Uh, Mr. President, I make a motion that we approve the minutes of July 9th as written. Is there a second? Second. Any discussion? All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? The ayes have it. Next item is President's report. I don't have anything this evening under this section. Can I get a motion to uh, move up? Actually, let's go through number six. Okay. Sorry, number six is presentations of petitions, proclamations, and similar papers and matters. And 6A is the acceptance of a proclamation honoring Deborah Dunn, program coordinator at the Council on Aging on her retirement. And uh, Anne Marie Gagnon is here because uh, Deborah can't be. And I'm going to ask Councilor Picciarelli to read it because my computer's not working. That's right. <laughs> Uh, whereas the quality of life in a community is enhanced by the commitment and willingness of an employee to give his or her time and talents during employment, and whereas this year marks the 26th year of Deborah Dunn's tenure with the Watertown Council on Aging and Senior, C Senior Center of the Town of Watertown, and whereas Debbie brought to the Council on Aging and Senior Center a broad range of experience from child care provider to legislative data processor at the Massachusetts State House. And whereas Debbie began her career on July 16, 1993, as the Secretary for the Council on Aging, the Senior Center, which operated from Town Hall, and then as a renamed Principal Accounts Clerk when the Senior Center officially opened at 31 Marshall Street in 1994, and then was promoted to the position of Program Coordinator on October 6, 2014, and whereas Debbie is admired by all she meets for her professional manner, dedication, kindness, and extraordinary efforts in the discharge of her duties for older adults of Watertown, and whereas Debbie has been instrumental in providing activities and experiences that promote the social, health, educational, and recreational needs of Watertown's older adults to age well, and whereas Debbie enjoys time with her husband Tommy, dear daughters Jenna and Nicole, and friends, and enjoys yearly trips to Walt Disney World in Florida and snowy days in New Hampshire, and whereas it is fitting and proper that members of the Council on Aging Board 
colleagues in the town, older adults, family and friends share in her retirement celebration and wish her well as she pursues new interests and pleasures in her next chapter. And therefore be it resolved that the Honorable Town Council of the city known as the town of Watertown does hereby extend its profound gratitude and appreciation to Deborah A. Dunn for her many years of service and dedication to the citizens of Watertown and wishes her continued good health and happiness upon her retirement. In witness thereof, I set here, hereunto set my hand and cause the great seal of the town of Watertown to be affixed on this 30th day of July, 2019. Mark Steris, President. Thank you. I will say this was presented at a uh, celebration at the Senior Center, which was very, very well attended by a number of people. Uh, and she was very happy that day. So can I get a motion on the proclamation? Uh, motion to approve. Is there a second? Second. Any discussion? All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? The ayes have it. Next item on the agenda is an acceptance of a proclamation honoring Marie McGuire on her 100th birthday. And uh, we were, we've been requested again by the Brigham House for a proclamation, and I think we're doing quite a few of these lately, and that's a good thing. And I don't mind that we, uh, as a council, recognize people that are 100 years old or plus, including Councilor Canellis's the beloved mother. Um, whereas Marie Gertrude Venuti, born on August 13, 1919, to Laura and Thomas Venuti, was a sister to three brothers and three sisters and lived in Watertown. And whereas Marie's family was known for its hospitality, her father, a local barber, hosted Friday night spaghetti and oil feasts, and her mother, the family baker, taught Marie to bake pies, her specialty being lemon meringue for, for which Marie won prizes. And whereas Marie's family moved to Waltham when she was a child, she later worked at the Waltham Watch Factory, hand-making watches. And whereas Marie reconnected with Tom McGuire, who she first met at the age of nine, and married him, together they had two sons and a daughter, their family growing to 13 grandchildren and 27 great-grandchildren. And whereas Marie and Tom retired to lazy days in Fort Myers, Florida, and were both active in choir, the dart team, and the bowling league. And whereas Marie and Tom celebrated their 50th anniversary with the cruise to Alaska. And whereas after Tom died, Marie continued to live in Florida, riding roller coasters at 82, enjoying driving across country, and camping along the way as a member of the St. Lawrence Camper Association in Winchenden. And whereas Marie at the age of 99 moved to the Brigham House assisted living community, has many new friends, and enjoys bowling, exercising, and baking. Now, therefore, be it resolved that the town council of the city known as the town of Watertown hereby extends its warmest wishes to Marie McGuire on the celebration of her 100th birthday. In witness whereof, I hereunto set my hand and cause the great seal of the town of Watertown on this 13th day of August, 2019, Mark Sedaris. Can I get a motion on the proclamation? Uh, motion to approve the proclamation. There a second. 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 Any discussion? All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? <clears throat> the ayes have it. Thank you. Thank you. Um, we're going to skip over item seven. Can I get a motion to move up all of the items in item eight? So moved. Is there a second? Second. Any discussion? All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? The ayes have it. 8A is a public hearing and vote on a petition by NSTAR Electric Company doing business as Eversource Energy for a grant of location to install northerly on Irving Street from pole 788, approximately 146 feet north of Arsenal Street, a distance of nine plus feet of conduit to provide underground electric service to Irving, 57 Irving Street. Welcome. Good evening, my name is Maureen Carroll and I'm here on behalf of the Eversource Company and I'm here on a petition. The petition is on Irving Street. It's gonna be northerly from pole 78 slash eight, approximately 146 feet north of Arsenal Street, distance of about nine feet of conduit and this is gonna provide electric service underground to 57 Irving Street. Okay. Since this is a public hearing, is there any member of public that wishes to be heard on this grant of location? Seeing none, I close the public hearing and ask for a motion from the council. Mr. President, I make a motion that we approve the petition for NSTAR uh, for 
the underground, underground condu conduit at 57 Irving Street. Is there a second? Second. Any discussion? Councilor Fal Feltner. Sorry. Thank you, uh, Mr. President. I just request that we receive an abutters list as I didn't see it attached um, to the notice. I believe it's standard that abutters list usually. And the question is, what it, since there's a park there, what do you, do we, or I don't know, maybe it's Steve Magoon question, what we anticipate um, electric being used for? It's actually going to be, it's going to be an underground service to a pedestal for a power outlet, I believe, for lights. Oh. Okay, thank you. And um, is there a time frame for the project? So when this gets approved, it will go into construction, and then we'll have to um, come out and make the connection. Okay. Thank and you. There wasn't a butters list forwarded for all of the petitions. Oh, okay. Sorry, I didn't see that it on the agenda. So. Are there any other questions? All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? The ayes have it. Next item is a public hearing and vote on a petition by NSTAR Electric Company doing business as Eversource Energy for a grant of location to install conduit in Marion Road southwesterly from pole 9313, approximately 106 feet northwest of Sydney Street, a distance of eight plus or minus feet of conduit to provide underground electric service to 78 Marion Road. Okay, and again, I'm Maureen Carroll with the Eversource Company on a petition for Marion Road. It's going to be southwesterly from pole 93 slash 13, approximately 106 feet northwest of Sydney Street, distance of about eight feet of conduit. This is going to be underground electric service for 78 Marion Road. Okay, this is also a public hearing. If there's any member of the public that wishes to speak on this petition, Seeing none, I close the public hearing and ask for a motion from the council. Uh, Mr. President, make a motion that we approve the grant location for NSTAR for underground conduit at 78 Marion Street, Marion Road. Is there a second? Second. Any discussion? All those in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? The ayes have it. 8C is a public hearing and vote on a petition by NSTAR Electric Company <laughs> doing business as Eversource Energy for a grant of location to install conduit in Elm Street, westerly from pole 11211, approximately 239 feet north of Monroe Avenue, a distance of three plus or minus feet to provide underground electric service to 80 Elm Street. Again, good evening. My name is Maureen Carroll with the Eversource. This is on a petition for Elm Street. It's going to be westerly from pole 112 slash 11, approximately 239 feet north of Monroe Ave, distance of about three feet of conduit, and this is going to be to provide underground electric service to 80 Elm Street. This is also a public hearing. If there's any member of the public that wish to be heard on this issue, Seeing none, I close the public hearing and ask for a motion from the council. Uh, Mr. President, I make a motion that we approve the NSTAR petition for underground conduit uh, at 80 Elm Street. Is there a second? Second. Any discussion? Councilor Cornelis. Thank you. Um, when I reviewed the abutters notice, I noticed that there were just a handful of notices that were sent. Can you tell me exactly what the radius is for the abutter notices? So normally what happens, the abutters are mailed out from the town of Watertown. We send a list of abutters. Steve, if you could help yeah. us with that. So in this case, the, the requirement is just for abutters. So it's a list of the abutting property owners that they provide to the clerk. Excuse me, because I noticed that uh, it was the abutter that is directly across the street, but it did not include any abutters to abutters. Yeah, I believe the requirement is for abutters, not abutters to abutters. But I think it, it should be all the way around the property, not just across the street. Thank you. Maybe we can review the abutters list sure. at another time. Thank you. Any other questions or comments? All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? The ayes have it. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, before I forget, I neglected to say that the town manager, Michael Driscoll, is not here with us tonight, and assistant town manager, community director, community Development and Planning Director Steve Magoon is ably sitting in. 
The next item on the agenda is a public hearing and vote on a petition by National Grid for a grant of location to install and maintain approximately 350 feet more or less of 12-inch gas main in Lexington Street, Watertown, from, existing, from the existing 12-inch gas main in the traffic island across from house number 309 to the Belmont Town Line in the intersection of Lexington Street and Belmont Street. Welcome. Good evening. I'm Barbara Kelleher and I represent National Grid on this petition. And we are in, uh, installing 350 feet from the traffic island to the, um, the Belmont Town Line. It is for a um, new development that is in Belmont. It, it, we're, we want the elevated pressure line put into Belmont, brought into Belmont. Thank you. This is also a public hearing. Any member of the public wish to be heard on this petition? Seeing none, I close the public hearing and ask for a motion from the council. Uh, Mr. President, I make a motion that we approve the National Grid grant of location for Lexington Street for a new uh, high pressure gas line. Is there a second? Second. Any questions or comments? Approximately how long is this going to take? Well, we have already been uh, approved in Belmont, so I'm not sure which, where they're going to start. Most likely they will start in, um, in um, Watertown. But 350, um, that's, I'm not exactly sure. I don't know if Steve could. Uh, Mr. President, I, I, in talking with Mr. Mee, I think he anticipated it might be done this construction season, so into the fall. Just because it's a very busy area. Absolutely. And I can imagine. With all what's going on on Common Street and other streets, it's just, just curious. Thank you. Any other questions or uh, Councillor Feltner? Thank you. I, I was just wondering if there's been any reports of any gas leaks in this area. Um, I have no idea on that one. I, I could certainly give you the information on that. Okay. I, yeah. yes. Thank you. Any other questions or Councillor Pichero? I just want and, um, I know the, the project in Belmont is going to tie into that. Are you going to, is uh, National Grid going to do it as one project? start to finish yes i believe so once now they've been eager to get um this approved in order to make it a one big job okay continuous job okay that's why i they was didn't just... want to stop at the time and, and then uh and maybe again uh, steve would know this so then the the restoration of the roadway would be done the watertown part would be restored after the Belmont work is complete um, as one complete restoration project? Not necessarily. I don't, I, I don't know about the coordination with the Belmont portion of it. Um, I did talk to Mr. Mee about the restoration within Watertown. And again, the, the expectation is once that's put in, then we do the restoration through the, the Watertown section. Um, we've already done the, the uh, section from Main Street up, and then this would be the, the next section. Um, he's also evaluating whether uh, then at that point Lexington Street should be, be uh, submitted for a full reconstruction or maybe a mill and overlay to just bring it up to, to standards. But this would be an important piece of that. I'm not sure about the coordination with Belmont, though. Okay. The Belmont portion. Thank you. Any other questions? All those in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? You guys have it. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Good night. Okay, we're going to go back on to unfinished business and the Committee on Rules and Ordinances report regarding the review of fees for liquor licenses granted pursuant to Chapter 73 of the Acts of 2016. Councilor Donato is the chair. Thank you, Mr. President. Where I read the report in its entirety at our last meeting. I think I'll try to uh, see if I can do a good job summarizing it. But uh, the Committee on Rules and Ordinances met on um, Thursday, June 13th at 5.30 p.m. in the town council chamber. Present were myself uh, as chair, Councilor Woodland, vice chair, Councilor Feltner as secretary, also president uh, were Andrew Coppolotti of Boylston Properties, attorney Bill York who was representing Boylston Properties, resident David Stokes, and we also were accompanied by uh, Mr. Mee and uh, Mr. Schumann from DPW. As you stated previously, the agenda was to review the fees of liquor licenses granted pursuant to Chapter 73 of the Acts of 2016. I called the meeting to order at 5.30 p.m. and gave a brief recap of the April 17th committee meeting at which we discussed um, Arsenal Yard's uh, request for additional liquor licenses as well as unique circumstances of Arsenal 
personal yards related to uh, the annual fee. Uh, this meeting was focused on those fees. Uh, Attorney York thanked the committee for moving along uh, its request to the town council and the mass legislature for additional licenses. Mr. Coppolotti reviewed uh, some previous discussion points about the very unique development at Arsenal Yards, such as how new mixed-use development relates to a small restaurant and its need for war planning without the ability to open in some cases until 2021. Uh, Attorney York stated that um, some of the pressure will hopefully be taken off by the uh, home rule petition that was moved along to the state legislature, but that in certain circumstances, uh, lenders would require a liquor license to be secured early in the process. Uh, Councilor Woodland compared the situation to that of an existing restaurant that closes for a year for renovations and then argues that they should not uh, pay for a liquor license that year. Uh, he is not convinced with the argument put forth by the petitioner and will likely vote against a uh, reduced fee when the full council votes, but he hopes that the Mass Legislature grants the additional liquor licenses to Watertown. Mr. Coppoletti explained that this was not a financial gift for Boylston Properties, but about helping their tenants be successful. Uh, they understood that if this does not pass and their tenants have to pay the $8,100 annual fee uh, for nothing, just as a placeholder, then the cost of doing then that is a cost of doing business here. But he thinks that it is incumbent upon Boylston Properties to ask for the reduction in the annual fee. Um, I recognize that the committee had received a printed email message concerning liquor licenses from Donna Doucette, the licensing board chair, which is attached to the minutes in this agenda. Uh, and I think that was the delay last month. They were not included uh, at that time. Uh, I made a motion for the committee to recommend the town council consider implementing a fee structure wherein chapter uh, 73 liquor license grantees would pay a reduced annual fee of $2,700 until such time they receive a certificate, certificate of occupancy that was seconded by Council Feltner and approved 3-0. Uh, the meeting adjourned at 6 p.m. pursuant to a, another motion that carried 3-0 to zero, and the minutes were respectfully uh, submitted by Council Feltner and I thank her for her quick turnaround on these. Thank you. Can I get a motion to accept the report? So moved. I thought it was Second. We did. I just want to okay. make sure we do it again. Okay. Any discussion? All those in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? The ayes have it. Can I get a motion now on the action item? Uh, Mr. President, I make a motion uh, that we, um, the council considers implementing a fee structure wherein Chapter 73 liquor licenses grantees would pay a reduced annual fee of $2,700 until such time as they receive a certificate of occupancy. Is there a second? Second for discussion purposes. Okay. Discussion. Councilor Woodland. I just want to note a kind of fine difference uh, that stems from the committee report, and that is the fact that the special legislation that the town of Watertown got to get our additional fees indicated that the persons that would be setting the fee structure for those licenses would be the full town council. So the committee thought it would be um, maybe against the spirit of that legislation to have a negative referral coming out of the committee because it's not the three of us that should be making that decision, it's the full council and that's based on our special legislation. Um, I think I indicate in the committee minutes that uh, not sold on this idea and I think my example and analogy is pretty apt in that a current holder could want to shut down for six months and then could make a rational argument that they shouldn't have to pay the license for six months because that's very comparable to the situation that um, prospective tenants of boils and properties are going through. So I won't be supporting this, but just wanted to make that clarification. Any other comments? Councilor Falkoff. Well, if I understood the situation correctly, we're saying that these people want to save $5,400 out of a build-out cost of one to two million. That seems like a very small percent of what they'll be laying out, and it seems puzzling that they would even be making this request given that. Thank you. Councilor Donato. Thank you, Mr. President. Um, I think when this vote 
the, we had the vote earlier this year uh, to request the additional liquor licenses. I, I fully supported that, and I know uh, Councilor Cunellis uh, mentioned some concerns about you know wanting to be fair to the holders of the you know quote unquote traditional liquor licenses, and I uh, completely agreed with her then. Uh, but I also thought it was incumbent on us to uh, move that forward to help make sure that Arsenal Yards was a successful project um, with regard to their request for reduced uh, fees, um, I went back to the minutes from the initial, uh, when this was initially, the uh, additional liquor licenses were initially brought before the council, and I, I thought it was really interesting uh, to see over and over again the comments from the then uh, town councilors about how they wanted to make sure that system was implemented again in a way that was fair to the traditional liquor licenses. Um, Similar to the concern Council Woodland has, uh, I don't see if this is not um, an option available for the traditional liquor licenses. I don't see how it's an option that we can make uh, available for the Chapter 73 licenses without it being unfair to the traditional liquor license holders. So I will not be supporting this. Thank you. Councilor Picciarelli. Uh, th thank you, Mr. President. Um, I will just say uh, right up front, I'm, I'm not going to support this. Um, the logic seems a little bit uh, distorted on this. Uh, and you can tr trying to say it's not fair that they have to pay $8,000 a year uh, for a liquor license that they may not be able to use for the first year uh, is somehow unfair, where if this was a traditional Chapter 139 liquor license, Typically, a potential restaurant owner would have to negotiate the purchase of that license from somebody else and would pay seventy-five dollars to $100,000 and would have to arrange that financing up front or they get their construction loan of one to $2 million to build a restaurant for a year. So uh, the current license holders are actually paying the debt service on the money they, they're borrowing for that seventy-five dollars to $100,000 in addition to the $2,700 license fee to the town and they're not able to sell for the first year because they're undergoing construction so and the town does not waive any license fees for traditional chapter 139 license holders so uh, now these license holders under the special act chapter 73 don't have to pay that 75 to a hundred thousand dollars to another license holder to get the license they can just rent it from the town for eight thousand dollars a year uh, which is uh, we structured that specifically to encourage new restaurants to come. And uh, so now the logic that they have to be waived a fee when the traditional Chapter 139 license holders don't, in my mind, uh, does not make sense and is not fair. So I will not be supporting this. Are there any? Councilor Gonzalez. Thank you. Uh, I certainly echo the comments of my colleagues, but I, I want to also add that within the last couple of years, We've had numerous requests from developers and property owners to change zoning bylaws, to change issues related uh, to structuring of liquor licenses and other um, matters that have come before us. And I don't feel, think that that's appropriate, that we should be bending for developers and property owners. It's for the common good of our community. Um, I will certainly not be supporting this. It's the cost of doing business. As my colleagues have stated, uh, other liquor license owners are paying substantially more for the traditional liquor licenses. So I think uh, that moving forward, uh, this was a given. These were special licenses set aside for this particular development and surrounding area. Um, and we should be abiding by the rules that were set forward and not changing them or altering them to suit the needs of a specific developer. Thank you. Councilor Feltner. Thank you, Mr. President. Um, I don't feel that strongly one way or the other. The thing that most concerns me is I, I don't feel that um, council has a good understanding of what we're faced with and the changes that are going on at the Arsenal Yards. Um, being a regional mixed-use development, the kind of development we've never seen before, 
major changes coming to our town and what it means to really encourage economic development in, in something like this um, uh, newly new construction, et cetera, et cetera. Um, and so I guess my comment would be that I wish we perhaps council was had more information, whether it's from uh, the financial perspective from our auditor or community development planning and understanding the changes that we're going through and our votes and the implication that makes to foster ep economic development um, and, and help it be successful. We got some information and of course it's all from the point of view of this developer, um, but I, I feel a little um, limited in our understanding really of these major changes um, in town and um, how they're going to affect the rest of town in this particular location and attracting hopefully not just um, major retailers or national retailers and chains but more of a maybe maybe not exactly a startup small local but a smaller type of local local looking business locally run locally owned so um, I know our staff's working really hard. I just wanted to make that comment that as a council, I feel like um, we could we're, we we could uh, stand to have more information on economic development in Watertown. Thank you. Are there any other comments, Councilor Bays? Um, yeah, I agree with both Councilor Feltner and Councilor Falkoff. I don't know why we're we're talking about this amount of money. It just seems like a small amount of money um, compared to what it costs to to build a restaurant. Um, also, uh, and I'm a, a little concerned, I, I, I just hope that I don't want stuff like this to come to us for these that, that don't seem significant and don't seem like they're really going to make or break somebody's, um, it's, it's a little frustrating to just kind of have something that's so that's such a it seems to me a little bit small and and, and like something that we shouldn't be spending time on so any other comments council woodland just because i can't stop myself from refraining um i guess three points first being i would love to make a rule that we don't deal with significant small really insignificant <laughs> issues because then half the referrals <laughs> that we get to council committee wouldn't happen um we've spent what 15 hours and six meetings on a noise ordinance that originated from one person complaining about the lawnmowers outside the park next to their house. So I guess I'd take some refrain with uh, that, uh, some assertion that we don't address small significant issues. Additionally, I'd take some, uh, I, I guess I would, I would go against the argument that we do referrals on behalf of folks coming in. We literally, I have 16 referrals in front of me. I think one has to do with someone coming in it's the marijuana place that we talked about like two weeks ago we don't this isn't a consistent thing this doesn't happen often it doesn't happen frequently the vast majority 99 percent of our issues are issues that are brought up by the council by residents for and on behalf of the people of watertown so i take concern with that and then third the idea i think or just even the inference that we don't have a choreographed informed plan about mixed use um, development in this town is wrong. We do. We've had it for years, and this is part of it. So I just want to mention those things. Thank you. Councilor Canellis. Uh, thank you. I, I was looking for a statement, and I really couldn't find it, and I just did. I was not in attendance at the committee meeting, but um, the bottom of the first uh, page, it indicates uh, uh, York, meaning Attorney York, stated that hopefully some of the pressure is taken off with the potential additional liquor licenses if granted by the state legislature. But the exception is that some lenders require a liquor license to be secured even earlier. So if lenders are requiring earlier liquor licenses, the business owner is fully aware what is required as the cost of doing business. So I don't think it is appropriate for, um, for the town council to actually make any exceptions when the business owner has known that their lender requires 
possibly a liquor license in advance. Thank you. Any other comments? All those in favor? Opposed? Opposed. Opposed. Looks like this, this failed. So this did not pass. We'll move on. We'll move on to section nine, which is mo motions, orders, and resolutions. 9A is a first reading on a proposed loan order authorizing the town treasurer with the approval of the town manager to borrow and or expend monies in the amount of $4,080,875 $4, under Mass General Law, Chapter 44, Section 77, or pursuant to any other enabling authority for the purpose to pay costs of owner's project management services associated with the design, construction, addition, and a renovation to the three elementary schools. I want to recognize Steve McGoon. Thank you, Mr. Steve President. Uh, as council knows, uh, through the public schools, we issued uh, a request for services for an owner's project manager uh, for the design, construction, addition to, and or renovation of the three elementary school projects as part of the building for the future initiative. Um, as a follow-up to that, on July 11th, 2019, the School Building Committee unanimously approved a motion recommending the town manager execute a contract with Hill International as the owner's project manager for the three elementary school projects. Um, tonight, we have a first reading for that, which will be advertised uh, for public hearing and vote at the September 10th, 2019 town council meeting. Thank you. Next item on the agenda is 9B, which is a first reading on a proposed loan order authorizing the town treasurer with the approval of the town manager to borrow and or expend monies in the amount of $2,500,000 under Mass General Law Chapter 44, Section 71 of the General Laws or any other enabling authority to pay the costs of street and sidewalk work. Mr. Um, Mr. Magoon. Thank you, Mr. President. Um, as you'll recall, on March 12th, the Honorable Town Council adopted 29 uh, conceptual recommendations for the uh, 2020 to 2024 Capital Improvement Program. Uh, recommendation number eight reads as follows. Proceed with the FY19 proposed loan order for $2,500,000 street and sidewalk projects for summer 2019 in accordance with the Public Works Committee report approved by the Town Council on January 8th, 2019. Uh, the Committee on Public Works uh, and the Committee on Budget and Fiscal Oversight met uh, on July 8th with the purpose of meeting was to provide policy guidance for the 2019 road program. Um, Department of Public Works uh, moved forward with that in creating uh, a bid document. Tonight is the first reading and will be advertised for public hearing and vote on the September 10th, 2019 Town Council meeting. Thank you. 9C is a first reading on a proposed loan order authorizing the town treasurer with the approval of the town manager to borrow and or expend monies in the amount of $1,100,000 under Mass General Law Chapter 44, Section 71 of the General Laws, or any other enabling authority to pay costs of purchasing, equipping a new ladder truck for the use of the fire department. Mr. Magoon. Thank you, Mr. President. Uh, as the council is aware, you received uh, correspondence from uh, Chief Robert J. Quinn regarding the need to move forward with the replacement of the uh, 2005 Ladder 1. Uh, which will need to be done soon as the ongoing expensive maintenance and turnaround time from ordering and the delivery of a new ladder truck. So uh, moving forward, this will allow us to put it in line and get it uh, uh, delivered to the town in time to replace ladder one. Tonight's first reading will be advertised for public hearing and vote at the September 10th, 2019 town council meeting. Thank you. We have three more first readings, and these are referrals to the planning board, which has no discussion here this evening. Um, I'm going to read them first. 9D is a first reading and referral to the planning board for a public hearing, a request to amend the zoning ordinance to amend the assisted living overlay district 
to clarify the purpose clause and create a consistent affordable housing requirement. Can I get a motion to refer this to the planning? So moved. Is there a second? Second. Sir. Any discussion? All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? <laughs> the ayes have it. 9E is a first reading and referral to the planning board for a public hearing, a request regarding the effects of the removal of ledge from a construction site that created excessive vibration and machinery noise. Can I get a motion to refer to the planning board? So moved. Is there a second? Second. second. Any discussion? All those in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? The ayes have it. 9F is a first reading and a referral to the planning board for a public hearing a request to amend the zoning map of Watertown by removing the parcels of land located at 70, 78, 84, 86, and 88 Galen Street from the limited business district into the I-2 Industrial 2 Zoning District in keeping with the budding properties. Can I get a motion to refer to the planning board? So moved. Is there a second? Second. Any discussion? Councilor Falkoff. No. Uh, Councilor Feltner. I keep <laughs> You guys. Thank you, Mr. Yo. President. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> oh, wait, I take issue with that. Um, I was I was just wondering, could I ask a question of Mr. Magoon? Uh, on just a, I have a short question. You can ask him like a general overview. Yeah. This is not. Yeah, just a general overview. This is not for discussion. Of, not for. Of um, the Steve. approach of um, zoning these parcels, all is I two versus doing an. Um, like a district overlay. Mm -hmm. I guess I put that out there. I would welcome further discussion about that and your opinion about approach. Sure. Uh, when we get into the discussion of the application, we can certainly talk about that in more detail because we did have discussions with the property under those okay. two options about what made more sense. They chose to, to go forward with a consistent zoning across the entire property. Okay, so that that would be a discussion when it goes to planning, planning board, board first. or if I meet with yes. you. Okay, sure. thank you. And then they would recommend back to us. Yep. Thank you. We would also be having a public hearing as yeah. well. And this would be a zoning change which would require a super majority of the council. Right. Did I get that right? <laughs> thank you. Oh, can I get a, uh, we have a motion and a second. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? You guys have it. Thank you, Council Petrelli. Committee reports, item 10. 10A is a Committee on Human Services report regarding affordable housing trusts. Councilor Palumbo is the chair, but Councilor Bays is going to be reading the next few reports. Councilor Bays. Thank you. Um, so the joint meeting of the Town Council Committee on Human S Services and the Watertown Housing Partnership met at 7.15 p.m. on June 26th. In attendance were um, Councilor Palumbo, the chair, myself as vice chair, Susan Falkoff, secretary, Councilor Lisa Feltner, Andrea Adams, senior planner, Fred Reynolds, the housing partnership chair, Elodia Thomas, community preservation committee chair, Jonathan Bakke and CPC member David Stokes, stormwater advisory committee chair, and Shelley Goering of the Mass Housing Partnership. The purpose of the meeting was to learn more about municipal affordable housing trusts from Shelley Goering of the Mass Housing Partnership. Her PowerPoint slides are attached to these um, minutes. MGL Chapter 44, Section 55C gives municipalities the right to establish a municipal affordable housing trust fund in order to provide for the creation and preservation of housing for the benefit of low and moderate income households. There are currently 112 MAHTs in Massachusetts. A MAHT is a public entity that is managed by a board of trustees with represent representation from the executive and legislative branches of the municipality as well as community members. The trust can accept funds from the Community Preservation Act and from other sources that may include zoning fees collected in lieu of creating inclusionary zoning units, free cash, cell phone tower, lease payments, etc. The, the parameters of a given MAHT are set by ordinance and communities differ in their structure. In Cambridge, 80% of CPA funds are put into the trust annually. In Somerville, the figure is 45%, and in Grafton, is 10%. The trust must track each source of funding separately and be sure that all rules of each source are, are followed for that source's portion of the fund. 
An advantage of a MAHT is that it can make timely decisions. If a property becomes available, the trust does not need to return to the, to the community's legislative branch, i.e. Watertown's town council for approval before the money can be spent. Ms. Goering recommends that when establishing an MAHT, a community begin by determining the community's needs, setting priorities, and creating benchmarks. She presented some examples of how communities have set up the fund. In some cases, a housing partnership is folded into an MAHT, and others, two, two separate entities remain. In some cases, when the two entities are kept separate, housing partnership reviews projects for consistency with the community's inclusionary zoning and does general affordable housing advocacy, while the MAHT focuses on creating and preserving affordable housing. Ms. Green gave many examples of how MAHT funds have been used under the categories acquire, land, create, housing, preserve, and support. Not only can new affordable units be created, funds can be used to preserve affordable housing in cases of expiring restrictions on units. Currently, there are none in Watertown, as well as fund tenant support, such as rental assistance. In order to be effective, the board members of the MAHT should have, a very, have very delineated roles and work well together. The meeting adjourned at 9 o'clock p.m., and these minutes were respectfully submitted by Susan Falkoff. Thank you very much. Susan. Thank you. Can I get a motion to accept the report? So moved. Is there a second? Second. Any discussion? All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? The ayes have it. 10B is a Committee on Media and Public Outreach Report regarding kitchen table conversations. Councilor Bays. So the um, meeting um, of the Committee on Media and Public Outreach was held June 23rd, 219, 2.30 p.m. Um, we the purpose was to educate potential hosts of kitchen table conversations about their role. Attendees included committee members, to Councillor Tony Palumba as chair, Councillor Lisa Feltner, vice chair, and Councillor Caroline Bays as secretary, as well as Councillors Vinnie Picciarelli and Anthony Donato. Also present were Ora Grodsky, Bill Madsen, Larry Raskin, Jonathan Rosenthal, Ingrid Joy Wilson, Alice Polterek and Chuck Dickinson from the Watertown Community Conversations, and there were additional attendees that are listed with this report. After Tony Palumbo welcomed the attendees, Ora Grodsky passed out packets um, and gave an introduction to kitchen table conversations, explaining their purpose and um, that the purpose is to inform co the committee how town government can best communicate and engage with Watertown citizens. She then went through the process of hosting a kitchen table conversation, which includes arranging a date, inviting neighbors and friends, and providing light refreshments with reimbursement from WCCs. The host will also participate in the conversation, which will be facilitated, facilitated by a WCC member, and if possible, will have a town councilor present to listen, learn, and serve as a resource, as a resource if needed. The group discussed their hope for the outcomes of the KTCs, including better communication between town government and citizens, helping people feel empowered, bringing in new people and more varied voices, making people feel heard, building a stronger community, keeping the sense of our small town, and engaging new people who have joined our community. The attendees broke into five different groups and participated in sample KTCs. Questions that were asked included, how have you engaged in the town? What's a hope you have for um, that increased public engagement? What is, what's a hope you have for what increased public engagement might do for Watertown? We returned to the larger group and discussed themes that emerged from the conversations. Many people mentioned the strong sense of community people feel. Participants also brought up the, the importance of listening to all constituencies and decision making, their excitement about the creative and intentional effort effort between councillors and the residents outside of town hall and the hope that this will address the stress on residents' sense of community in times of change and growth. People felt it was an opportunity for outreach to people who do not usually hear from, we do not usually hear from, such as renters, perhaps with the help from building managers, and it could be another avenue of communication with the established community groups for instance, churches or NGOs, to, dis to focus on issues before town government and communicate their opinions and concerns. As a follow-up, the KTCs 
As a follow-up to the KTCs over the next few months, Nancy Hammett will collect and organize the data from the KTCs, and we will meet on October 23rd to discuss the outcomes of the conversations. Chuck Dickinson suggested a press release that could be shared with the community, including churches, Facebook, the library, et cetera, as well as the press. The committee voted to adjourn the meeting at 4.20 p.m., and the minutes were prepared by myself. Can I get a motion to accept the report? So moved. Is there a second? Second. second. Any discussion? All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? The ayes have it. 10C is a Committee on Media and Public Outreach report regarding follow-ups to the Kitchen Conversations. Counts the bays. <laughs> um, the committee met on July 11th uh, um, at 5.30 p.m. Um, to review the June, June 23rd meeting and discuss referrals to the committee. Attendees included Councillor Tony Palumba as chair, Councillor Lisa Feltner, vice chair, and Councillor Caroline Bays as secretary, and Watertown Community Conversations members Larry Raskin and Bill Madsen. Councillor Palumba called the meeting to order at 535. <clears throat> review, and the re per the review of the June 23rd meeting and process concerning kitchen table conversations going forward, everyone agree agreed the meeting was su successful. Councilor Feltner noted that the turnout was perfect and the, the conversations were constructive. Larry mentioned that several people commented that they thought it was good and they were glad to see the town doing this. Councilor Bays said we also had a good cross-section of town. And Councilor Palumba felt that people were enthusiastic and we were successful in recruiting new hosts. Larry added, we now have 34 people who have offered to be hosts or are interested in being a host, and added that the people had commented that it was good to see town councilors and community groups working together on a project. We were also glad other town councilors were present and had positive reactions. The town councilors were glad we participated at the sample kitchen table conversation as a resident, which, which gave us a sense of connection with the participants in the process. The committee reviewed the format and questions that will be prompts at the kitchen table conversations. You can see the attachment for the facilitator guide. And based on the questions, the conversations will encompass exploring ideas for the town and coming up with recommendations for the committee to address communication between the residents and town government. In addition, we will use a list of all communication tools the committee has developed to give to all participants to rate and you can see the attachment, the quick survey of engagement tools. Cecilia Link will coordinate the conversations, finding dates and matching facilitators with hosts, and will share the spreadsheet of the scheduled KTCs with the committee members. Councillor Palumba will invite the district town councillor to the meeting, and if the council, councillor declines, invite at-large councillors. In a few weeks, the committee will contact hosts who have not yet set up a meeting time for a KTC developing a process for responding to public forum questions. After discussing several options for a process to follow up to public forum comments and questions, which included solutions such as designing a flow chart or establishing formal lines of fo follow up based on the type of comment, the committee decided a simple solution would be the most efficient and workable. The sign up sheet for the public forum should include preferred contact information for the speaker and a box to check off whether the speaker requests follow-up regarding their comments. If follow-up is required, the president of the town council can assign the issue to the appropriate town government official. After reviewing the town council rules, the committee did not feel that it was necessary to amend the rules of the council. Um, and then there are the action items, which we can read. Do you want me to read them? Read them uh, later? No, we'll read them again when we come okay. to them. Referral to develop a town council communication plan in the event of an emergency. We discuss the next meeting to address the referral to develop a communication plan with the town manager in times of crisis or emergency so that councillors can respond to their constituents. We will invite Tom Tracy, Chief Quinn, and ask for a representative from the Watertown Police Department to discuss the referral. The meeting adjourned at 7.10 p.m. The minutes were prepared by myself. Can I get a motion to accept the report? So moved. Is there a second? Second. second. Any discussion? All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? The ayes have it. The first action item is that the council have a public forum sheet altered so that the contact information may be captured and whether the speaker requests a follow-up. Uh, so moved. Is there a second? Second. Any discussion? Councilor Woodland. 
So the only issue would, for me, would just be if there's a spot about whether or not the person uh, expects or requests a follow-up. We don't necessarily have a process in place for following up. Are we asking people to say, hey, I want to be contacted after the meeting, but not giving a method for doing so? So are we creating an expectation here? I think the next, be the next action item That's the second. is up to me to determine that course of action. Well, that's going to be a different different topic. I mean, maybe the cards pour the horse here. Maybe what? It is, in a sense. What? So, I mean, yeah, I'm not going to support it's, it's, it. It's, Councilor Bays, did you have? I was just going to say it's, the answer to that question was in the second action item, but. But a second item doesn't pass. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Uh, I would say that yes, we are giving, making, creating an opportunity for people who feel like they need follow-up to check off that they want some follow-up, and whether that's uh, President Sedaris or not. Um, you'll see the second action item because it's a council meeting. We felt like it made sense to have it be the president to help uh, determine that. But there is a, a lot of. Ex frustration expect, uh, expressed sorry, from residents or, or who say they come and voice concern, but then because of the format, which is standard, not just so people know, it's not just Watertown, all cities and towns, a standard format, that it's not a discussion. They address their concerns to the chair, but um, there often is no follow-up. They, they don't know what to expect. So that's why this came up. It seemed like a simple way to um, address concern. Councilor Falkoff. It, uh, it it's generally seems obvious whether the person requires or wants feedback or not. But uh, may, I don't know what the process is for getting it to the person. And also the council's left in the dark because somebody comes, pours their heart out, we hear it, and we don't know what follow-up is given. So I'm not sure the, um, uh, that the action item, the way the uh, remedy is described, is solves all the problems. I don't believe that that's, I think in combination of the two of them, just by getting contact information, we can determine a process whether it be that the town manager needs to respond, that another department head needs to respond. But I think the point of this whole thing is that under our current system, we don't respond to anybody. And no, nobody on this council knows who, when, or if responded to that person that came and made a statement. I think this is going to tighten that up, and everybody will be aware. But it, it's kind of a combination of both of these things, but it could have maybe been worded a little bit differently. Yeah, um, nothing in re the referral in either action item says to me that the council will know what happened. So that, I would like to fix that. Are there any other comments? Councilor Woodland. Well, again, I'm not really against the substance. That, that's fine um, if there's a place to put a check mark if you want to follow up in a certain mode of communication, that's fine with me. Um, I guess it's probably important to note for the folks at home that I've never seen a situation where a resident wanted a, a follow-up from a public forum, and at least in the West End, or and I know the same thing's true, the other district councilors, no one followed up with that person about a, um, an individual issue. That's literally never happened to my ears in the council. Um, but I, I, yeah, so I guess there's, there's not, it's not a substance issue here. Um, it's really just about getting the process down, and we never seem to do it. No. Council Canellis. Thank you. Um, now, I certainly agree with the, uh, the concept here. I think it's important to get back to uh, residents when they do come forward and if they are seeking follow up. It's very simple. Uh, you know, contact preference, you know, it's just going to be a matter of wording um, the, the sheet appropriately to give the resident the opportunity to tell us how they'd like to be contacted or as it states, if they want to be contacted. They might, might just want to be voicing their opinion with 
no follow-up requested. So I think this is the basic concept of it, and uh, it's noted in um, the second uh, action item that the comment uh, will be prior to the next town council meeting. So how we approach it from there can be determined, whether it's going to be read into the minutes of the subsequent meeting, or whether we, we as councilors will be notified prior to the meeting. That all can be worked out, but I think the concept here is that a resident comes forward, they will know that if they want to be contacted with follow-up, they will be. That's the bottom line. Thank you. And I will be supporting this. Any other comments? All those in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? The ayes have it. Action item number two is that the council authorize the council president to determine how to follow up to the public forum comments prior to the following town council meeting. So moved. Is there a second? Second. Any discussion? Councilor Woodland. Just this process is identified and laid out pretty explicitly in Rule 15 in the Town Council Rules. So I'm not exactly sure how it's the Council's president's prerogative to unilaterally decide how that happens. It process wise, it seems it should go to rules and ordinances. You I think the most important piece of this section is the fact that the council will know how someone, whether it be administration or myself or a district councilor, responded to the person that was in front of us asking or requesting something. It's a process that I can formalize so just as a quick follow-up, so you'd be developing a process and then referring it to committee for consideration? No. Mm -hmm. Okay, so that's... Just a very simple, if there's a request on, I, I mean, it's hard to think, some, we get so many different requests. Somebody comes in and complains about uh, their street not being cleaned. I would ask the manager to respond and formally send that response to the council. It's just an example. I guess, so my only concern would be that could be seen in violation of the Rule 15 perimeter that says we don't respond directly to the, the, the inquiry or the comments that comes forward. Um, so by making that directive, I'm not sure if that's a we direct still, response. We still wouldn't be responding directly yeah. while they were in front of us, which oh, is... okay. This is after the meeting. This is oh, okay. after the fact because Stop. we don't want to get into a debate with them here. That's the intent of that rule. This is after the fact how they get responded to. Okay. Just one more, sorry. Yes. Can we get the, the we had um, like two weeks ago, we had a town council that was about strict constructionists for the, for the rules. We should get them back for this they, vote. They, that was really good, guys, <laughs> a couple weeks ago. But Vinny brought up that point. Um, and everyone what? suddenly was really bent on following the council rules. So I think if we got those guys back here, we could, we could follow up and we could get this <laughs> referred to committee. I think that'd be really great. Council Petroli. Um, thank you, Mr. President. I, I just want to... Um, I will be supporting this, but I just want to say, you know, this second motion, um, we have, in my 12 years, uh, 13 years here on the council, you know, we have been doing this, and, and we've seen any number of issues that constituents have come and spoken at public forum, and sometime thereafter, you know, perhaps at the next meeting, um, the president took up the matter in, in the president's report and asked for certain actions or referrals to committees. Uh, people have come here and complained about, you know, parking tickets, flat tires, and uh, if we managed to catch the people before they ran out the door, we would just tell them to refer to a specific department head to take care of that. Um, other times, uh, other issues have become uh, a, a matter of new business that gets referred to the committee to help solve the issue. So I think... Um, we have been sort of doing this on an ad hoc basis. I just think this, this explicitly says that, you know, it's up to the president's mm -hmm. side in this particular request, you know, how we're going to respond back to the you know, number one motion. Now we actually have a name and an email address that we can respond back to the person that says, we've addressed this issue. It's going to be talked to the DPW, talk to, it's going to be referred to a committee or so on and so forth. So I just think um, this is really not anything new and, and that we're doing here, but I think it's it's a good process thing that we just sort of formalize it so everybody 
knows what the expectations are, and uh, it, it flows more smoothly. So, Councilor Feltner. Thank you, Mr. President. Um, so my comment would be um, somewhat to what Councilor Picciarelli, Picciarelli is saying in that and, and President Sedaris in that it's kind of tightening it up and making it public that there is a process and we thought that it made the most sense to have the president of the town council determine because he or she has discretion whether it's forming committees and just you know working with overseeing the um, council clerk and this body and so as a practical matter President Sardaris will decide, but also now it's public record. People say, oh, well, what happens? Oh, okay, there is something that will happen, and the council will be informed, and it's just, as he said, kind of tightening it up and acknowledging it, that we are kind of closing that loop, if you will, and um, other councils will know as well. Councilor Falcoff. Yeah, I just had a reaction to Councillor Picciarelli saying, well, we do it already. We run after people in the hallway and tell them. And I think that's exactly what we're trying to tighten up, that the council doesn't know what happened and there's no, there's, there's no closure on it. So I think that's the kind of action that we want to avoid. Any other Councillor Woodland? Yeah, I, again, not to put too much of a fine point on it, but no, I don't think anyone disagrees with the substance of it. We obviously want people that come out with a concern to go away with the expectation of some sort of follow-up um, and um, some uh, acknowledgement that they've been heard and addressed in a uh, thoughtful and respectful way. But the process to do that is in the town council rules where this process is already laid out in Rule 15. So we should be amending Rule 15 well, to include that process. Not, so I'm I don't not, understand why we're doing this other, this other thing here. I, I, I'm, I'm going to... I'm going to say that this is in addition to Rule 15 because Rule 15 is put in place so that we don't have a public debate with someone standing here. This is in addition to is just creating a mechanism which allows me to create a process of notifying the council how that person was, how that person's issue was addressed. As, you, as we've said, as others have said, we do as district councilors, you follow up. Uh, at large counselors follow up. I've seen Mr. Tracy, I've seen Mr. Magoon, I've seen Mr. Me go out in the hallway and follow up. This is just going to give the council their, uh, an, an opportunity to hear how that situation was followed up. Okay. I, I agree with all that, but why can't that process be in the council rules as opposed to doing it? I suppose it could be. Yeah. So I guess my, my question would be are there any other processes that we have right now in which that is the case? in which we have some non-town council rule or non-written rule where we have a process um, that we follow. My suggestion to the, on this then is going to be allow me to determine a process and then send it to the committee for discussion. That, I think that'd be great. So that it formalizes it for, because yeah. none of us are going to be here forever. I think oh. that's a great, great idea. <laughs> okay. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? The ayes have it. Thank you, Council Woodland, for that will make it a more formal discussion. Uh, 10D is a Committee on Personnel and Town Organization report regarding an orientation packet for newly elected councillors, Councillor Bays. Well, I got a nice little break there. <laughs> <laughs> Um, the, the Committee on Personnel and Town Organization met at, um, on August 6th present in the Town Council office. Present were Caroline Bays cha as chair, Susan Falkoff as vice chair, Angeline Canellis secretary, and Council President Mark Sedaris. The purpose of the meeting was to discuss an orientation packet for newly elected councillors. Councillor Canellis had provided a helpful list of existing documents that are or should be given to new councillors. Um, the working flowchart of the administration, department head names and contact numbers, internal administration, telephone extension numbers, parking permit and town hall campus parking layout from the treasurer's office, computer printer and email access. She also referenced links for town council rules, Watertown home rule charter, conflict of interest law, and open meeting law. The committee discussed 
Additional suggestions Carolyn Bays had supplied and other ideas and agreed that a checklist for new counselors would be helpful. It would include the documents and links referenced above, the human services employment packet, information on the council's three employees, the town manager, auditor, council clerk, and a suggestion to arrange meetings with each of them, annual calendar for council actions, including budget hearing information, current fiscal year budget message, capital improvement program, and budget priority guidelines, and a list of items to be provided by the um, council clerk, including the keys to the office, business card, office supplies, and description of services provided to the council by the clerk, including things such as how to set up, up um, committee meetings. President Sedaris noted that typically the president schedules meetings with each of the counselors sometime soon after the election to answer questions and discuss committee preferences. A list of current committee assignments and pending referrals could be provided at that time. The committee decided that Councilor Bays would ask the council clerk to work with her on putting together a package. The meeting adjourned at 7.45 p.m. And thank you to Councilor Falkoff who wrote these minutes. Thank you. Can I get a motion to accept the report? So moved. Is there a second? Second. Any discussion? All those in favor? Aye. Opposed? The ayes have it. 10 E is the Committee on Budget and Fiscal Oversight and Public Works report regarding policy guidance for the 2019 road program. Councilor Picciarelli. Uh, thank you, Mr. President. Uh, the joint committees met uh, on Monday, July 8th. Uh, the purpose of the meeting was to provide policy guidance for the 2019 road program. DPW staff noted that the single bid received was significantly higher than anticipated and to accept such a bid would not be in the best interest of the community. Some factors that could lead to higher bids include a limited number of municipal road reconstruction contractors, very active market demand, and the fact that Watertown bids traditionally include flat work like sidewalks, uh, which is more time consuming than mill and overlay, and that underground utility work is also included. The committee asked the, about the process the DPW goes through from the time the council approved the streets until the bids are received. It was noted the process itself is very extensive, encompasses significant planning and engineering review, and takes several months to finalize. The proposed timeline in the January 8, 2013 Public Works Committee report was reviewed and all agreed this needed updating. To proceed with the 2019 road program, the DPW proposes divided it into two separate bid, bids, one for underground utility work and one for road work and sidewalks. The utility work bids are due July 25th. The, there are typically more bidders avail, available for utility work and removing utility work from the road work may make it more attractive to bidders. Subject to various other factors, utility work would be completed by the end of calendar year 2019. The road work side work portion of the road program will go to bid towards the end of 2019 and be completed in calendar year 2020. The committee agreed with the strategy. Mr. Mee was optimistic that the 2019 road program could be completed within the proposed budget with this modification to the bid packages. Mr. Tracy noted that the proposed $2.5 million loan order for the 2019 road program has not yet been voted by the council. And in order to move forward with this plan, there should be a first reading on August 13th with a vote on September 10th. And of course, that was agenda item 9B. Regarding the road program for future years, the DPW said that bids may be most advantageous if received in December or January when contractors are not busy. This would require presenting streets for consideration to the Public Works Committee by July for a recommendation to the full council in August. The DPW will consider whether, whether or not such an aggressive schedule is possible for the 2020 road program and wants to try to work towards the schedule with a committee meeting in August. The DPW concluded by noting that there's about $6 million worth of projects currently being worked on this summer including mill and overlay, permanent patch, sidewalk installation, crack ceiling, pavement markings, sewer and drain improvements, and water mains. Additionally, engineering is underway for consideration of the, quote, longer roads, unquote, with the additional $1.5 million planned appropriation with a hope to go to bid for the first project in calendar year 2020. Uh, the meeting adjourned at 845, and I want to thank Council Woodland for preparing the report.
Can I get a motion to accept the report? So moved. Is there a second? Second. Any discussion? Councilor Felton. Thank you. Oh, this, this is after the... Oh, so I was, I'm sorry, I didn't make this meeting, and I, I don't know if this is more of a request for information, but I just wanted to bring this up because of Frank Street and Louise Street being so far behind. I don't know if they were discussed and there was some concern because the utilities covered those costs, but then there seemed to be some confusion because it, those streets weren't identified in the roads program as voted roads. So I don't know if we could speak to that now or not. Uh, Frank <coughs> Street and Louise Street were not in the uh, 2019 road program that was voted by the council. They didn't discuss it that night. So we did not discuss it. Right, but I mean, okay, so, so they're behind schedule, so that's just a separate issue. Yes. For, okay, thank you. Can I get it? Uh, we have a motion and a second. Any other comments? All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? The ayes have it. 10F is a Committee on Public Works and Rules and Ordinances report regarding tree protection. Councilor Picciarelli and Councilor Donato are the chairs. Um, I'm going to ask uh, Council Woodland to read the report because he actually chaired the meeting and okay. I wrote the report. So, so um, if yeah. that's... And um, I actually want to thank both Council Petrelli Donato for being so gracious as to allow me to chair. This was an issue that we had last session that um, I was chairing last session that they allowed me to continue on in that capacity, which very kind to them. Um, so the Joint Committee is convened at 7 p.m. on Monday, July 8, 2019, in the Philip Payne Lower Hearing Room. Present were Public Works members, Vincent Petrelli, Chair, Anthony Palumbo, Vice Chair, myself, Secretary, and Wills and Ordinances members, Anthony Donato, Chair, myself, Vice Chair, Lisa Feltner, Secretary, Staff President, was Forestry Supervisor and Tree Warden Chris Hayward. Also present were Councilors Caroline Bays, also Libby Shaw, Chiefs Watertown, David Stokes, Chair of the Stormwater Advisory Committee, and Resident Michelle Kokenauer. The purpose of the meeting was to continue discussions regarding regulations to strengthen the protection of trees. The meeting is follow as a follow-up from the committee's meeting on October 15, 2018. I chaired and distributed three handouts prepared by Mr. Hayward for the committee to review. One is Watertown's tree uh, Watertown's Tree Program Annual Long-Term Objectives for 2019, uh, Watertown's Tree Planting Program, and Watertown's Tree Pruning Guidelines. Discussion included the following. One, how enforcement will be coordinated for tree planting as, as a part of a special permit. Two, except for special permits, there is no way to track trees on private property except using satellite imagery. Three, how to, how to prioritize planting of trees in neighborhoods with the least canopy and highest need. Four, the fact that if a homeowner does not want a tree in front of their home, it will not survive. Five, strategies to make homeowners aware of the tree planting program and to request a tree. Regarding this last point, it was agreed that targeting new homeowners would be an efficient strategy. Council Petrelli made a motion for the town council to ask the administration to investigate adding the new tree planting flyer in the envelope with the assessor's mailing of the new homeowner residential property tax exemption application form and that was seconded by Councilor Feltner and voted five to zero. The committee discussed some changes to the handouts. Um, there are works in, these are works in progress and will change as needed during each planned annual review. Council Petrelli made a motion that the committee recommends the full town council endorse the tree warden strategy as presented in the three documents, um, three attached documents with four changes. One, change the title of the second document to Watertown's tree planting request program. Two, in the first document, under the section tracking of new tree plantings and the effect on town canopy levels, change the first sentence to read. The first year division will track how the number of trees planted by that division and by non-municipal organizations and persons affect the overall tree canopy levels and track the status of the town's existing tree canopy to identify priority areas in town where tree canopy is lacking. Three. In the first document, under the section Update on Tree Planting or Pruning Related Initiatives, change the first sentence to read, the first year division will update the committee on any other initiatives that involve the planting or pruning of trees in town, including outreach efforts performed in the previous, previous year. Four, change the title of the first document to Watertown's Tree, Prog Watertown's Tree Program Annual Objectives 2019. All these were seconded by Councilor Donato and voted five to zero. Um, and that closes out the referral as there will now be annual updates as part of the plan. The meeting adjourned to 828 and the uh, report was respectfully prepared by Councilor Petrelli and I thank him for a quick turnaround on those minutes. Thank you. Can I get a motion to accept the report? So moved. Is there a second? Second. second. Any discussion? 
Councillor Falkoff. Um, I, I yield to Councillor Feltner first. Okay, Councillor Feltner. <laughs> Thank you, Mr. Turns. <laughs> Uh, one of the things that concerns me that's really missing from this report um, under discussion is there was really the sixth topic that we spent time on, and that is that um, the materials all focused on planting private trees on private property instead of um, recognizing the need for public trees in public property, such as planting strips, and that it's our understanding that um, trees that they were being called public trees on private property uh, are no longer public after the first year um, post planting so I'm uh, a little I don't know if dismayed is too strong a word but that really should be included with the report but also a little dismayed that says it closes out the referral because um, there was a lot of discussion about needing to have a public tree program by Watertown, which is which led to uh, us saying, well, okay, this is a tree planting request program, and we really need to also focus on an annual tree, public tree planting program. So everything else I agree with, but that um, rather robust discussion we had about private trees and concerns of that is, is missing. So I, I don't know if we could amend it to say number six. That this is the report. If you want to make a motion to amend it, right. you're welcome to do that. Okay. So I guess my motion to amend would uh, include a number six under discussion included the following um, concern with focus on private trees, trees being planted on private property uh, versus public property such as planting strips. Is there a second to that? Seeing none, there's no, no amendment at this time. Council Falkoff. So I, I'm sorry not to support your amendment, but I'm, your, your comments really confused me. So first I'll say what I was going to say, and then maybe I'll talk about how confused I am now. In number two that's up there, um, the Forestry Division will track how the number of trees planted by the division and by non-municipal organizations and persons affect the overall tree canopy levels. How is the Forestry Department supposed to keep track of whether I'm planting a tree in my backyard? Let, let me just say that we're talking about the report. When it comes to making a motion on that action item, you can ask that question. We're talking specifically about the report itself right oh, now. Is that an action? That's These an are all item. action items? That's part of the action item. And I, I can address it in a second. Yeah. I, I, but I'm, yeah. I really want to focus on strictly the report. We had an, Fine. An, anyone else on the report? Council well, Department. just I'd say that the report doesn't capture the uh, full conversation of what was discussed. It's not he should, she should, but, but this whole topic that we was discussed per open meeting law. So well, let, me, let me remind everyone on this council that minutes of meetings are not specifically need to be verbatim of what was said at every meeting. So this is a report that was presented by Council Picciarelli. The committee agreed to this, and so this is what we're voting on. You had an opportunity to make a motion. It, it did not get a second. So unfortunately, this is what we're working on this evening. Council Woodland. The AG's guidance on open meeting law, meeting minutes, explicitly states that you do not need a verbatim word for not word. Verbatim. Explicitly Correct. states that. Right. Just note that. Additionally, that six point proposal, there was no focus on yes, there was. we need only private trees. That's that's not at all what happened. That was a byproduct of a total calculation. The focus was always on planting okay. public trees. Mm -hmm. So there's, the, 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 there's a misunderstanding, and because of that misunderstanding, there's a misrepresentation being made about what the contents of the meeting was, and then how that content of the meeting is reflected in these minutes, and it's incorrect. Are there any other comments on the report? <sighs> Councilor Felt. Yes, I would say, again, I'm not suggesting uh, verbatim minutes be produced. I'm saying an entire topic of the meeting is missing from the report, and I didn't say that it was um, only 
uh, focus on private trees, but if you look at the materials and what was being um, suggested for the plan, is including the action items, um, there, there was uh, a lot of discussion about um, tax dollars being used for um, planting private trees, and I'm just saying that's missing from the report. It's not a verbatim request. I, that, Mr. Council Fitcher, not, not not to belabor the point, but um, it uh, you know if you look at the thing, it says three handouts were distributed and we discussed them. And if you look at the second handout, Board of Towns Tree Planting Program, which we discussed at length during the meeting, which is attachment B, uh, there's a whole section, the whole middle section of that is back of sidewalk programs, which is I think uh, what Councillor. Uh, Feltner is referring to about planting uh, trees on public trees on private property back of the sidewalk. And we had quite a bit of robust discussion about everything on this uh, handout. So I think that really covered the topic that, that, that uh, Councillor Feltner is referring to. Um, I did not, uh, we end up making no changes to that. If you look at the second motion, we actually made four changes to those three documents. Uh, but we just sort of left that as it is after discussing it for about 20 minutes. So that just, just to provide some context to that. So we, it's not that we didn't discuss it, but as the handout said, we discussed all three handouts, which included that topic. Are there any other comments? All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? The ayes have it. The first action item is that the council ask the administration to investigate adding the new planting tree flyer in the envelope with the assessor's, assessor's mailing of the new homeowner residential property tax exemption application form. So moved. Is there a second? Second. Any discussion? All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? The ayes have it. The second action item that the council endorse the tree warden strategy as presented and amended in the committee report. So moved. Is there a second? Second. Now, Councilor Falkoff. Right. Um, how does how does the tree warden propose to know if I plant a tree in my backyard or two, and how it affects the tree cam canopy? Councilor Woodland. So we asked um, Chris that same question, um, and the, I think the best answer is the best way that he can. So most likely, it's going to be in the major developments from uh, landscaping plans and proposals, um, but it's going to be a lot um, of his own initiatives, his efforts. And additionally, working with uh, folks in town, um, with nonprofits, with Teens for Trees, with Chiefs of Watertown, and making a collaborative environment where they're going to be on the same page and, and moving forward with these. But the last piece is going to be the, the canopy piece. So it's going to be like satellite imagery to capture the, the actual canopy. But you're right. I think there's going to be portions where we miss, you know, my neighbor plants the tree. No one ever sees it or hears about it. We, we wouldn't have that tree calculated. In this, in this project. So it's entirely possible that we're planting more trees than we're reporting as part of this process, but um, I'm not sure there's, we haven't identified a way to capture 100% of them. Uh, I wonder if, when it says persons, that just means me planting a tree. And I wonder if, so it sounds like you're talking about developments that have a landscaping plan. And you wonder if that word could be changed to say non municipal organizations and uh, developments that have a landscaping plan. That I, mean, I well, guess that would fall in the category of non-municipal organization. Well, I think doesn't non no a developer is not an organization. It's not trees for Watertown. Councilor Picciarelli, you had your yes. Point I, I just want uh, one thing. To me. Um, so, if you go on the first page this, under the discussion points, discussion point number two, which if you were to scroll up just a little bit there. It says, uh, the discussion included uh, that except for special permits, there's no way to track trees and private property except using satellite imagery. And we had quite a discussion on that. There are software packages available that would capture <laughs> trees that are planted, say, in your backyard or, or elsewhere. Uh, and you can actually measure, uh, you know, objectively measure the, the total tree canopy, people cutting down trees, people planting new trees, trees growing bigger. So that's sort of uh, the, the current state of the art for, for doing that. Um, and um, that is within the technical capabilities of, of the tree warden and the forestry department. And, and the second thing I'll just point out that um, in what you mentioned about non-municipal organizations and persons, and I think uh, that's sort of a term of the art. 
Uh, persons include, um, you know, could be corporations, could be you know, businesses, and I will uh, defer to the town attorney on that. <laughs> but uh, when that's uh, typically when you refer to things and persons, it includes businesses and other corporations. I don't believe corporations are people. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, Mr. President. To Councillor Falkoff's point, again, in this discussion on the private um, aspect of it, this was part of that discussion, how would you track? And um, we did say non-municipal organizations and development. There was focus on development and their landscape plans, so um, an acknowledgement that People also cut down their trees, you know, lost easily six trees in one backyard. So how you would, it would take a lot of um, initiative or extra work. I agree that saying, I see your point, persons sounds like we're going to be able to track every tree in, in town and doesn't make a whole lot of sense. So um, I would support your motion to say and developments or redevelopment projects, or I don't know if Mr. Magoon has a preferred language. I, I do think that because in Council Picciarelli's uh, item two, except for special permits, not everybody that's doing development needs a special permit. Yeah. So I, I do think that we could potentially amend that that language if you so see if you see fit. Council Falkoff, would you like to just change those words or offer an amendment? Um, maybe someone else could, because now I'm really confused about what we're talking about. Maybe Mr. Magoon could help us. Number two. Oh, maybe Vinny could help. Council uh, I just, um, I think it's important to remember this is sort of a, this is the first year draft, and we do anticipate, as you, you see, that this is. Um, this is an, no, anticipated as being an, having an annual review and update. That's why it says 2019. And we expect every year to revisit this and, and sort of uh, build on what we've done the previous year. So I wouldn't, um, I, I want to caution the, the council that this isn't just a one and done deal that we're going to vote for this and it's going to be done forever. We anticipate this being sort of a, an evolving process that every year we, we, we would have a meeting with the tree warden and the committee um, to follow up on and say, okay, what worked last year? What do we want to do next year? So I would imagine that uh, next year, uh, when the Public Works Committee looks at this, um, it's going to look substantially different. But you have to start somewhere. So I, I would just not, I mean, if you look at all three of these attachments, we could probably sit here for the next two or three hours changing words or rewording things. But I would say let's give the tree warden the opportunity in his first year on the job, uh, in his new role, to sort of work through this and come back to the Public Works Committee and, and uh, we can discuss it further uh, next year. I wonder about changing the word persons to development slash redevelopment. I'd like to propose that amendment. And if it fails, it fails. I don't know how you guys are going to manage without me. Second. I made a motion. Okay. <laughs> uh, is there a second? Second. Discussion? Councilor Woodland. I mean, completely ignore what Councilor Picelli just said, which made a lot of sense, and that's how we should have moved forward. Let's forget that ever happened, apparently. And let's say we're going to change the word persons to redevelopment, which takes out the entire group of an individual doing it. So we're now non-municipal organizations, developers and redevelopers, and now we're taking out an individual planting, which is not the intent of anything we're doing. So individual are not planting public trees. I, the, the sentence could be the house is red, but, and we could debate for four hours about how to rearrange that with <laughs> absolutely zero change in the substance of that sentence. And that's what we're doing here. Well, I disagreed. Uh, hold on. Councilor Falkoff. Feltner. Falkoff. You had something oh, to say. I was going to so say. I'm recognizing you. <laughs> oh. um, I disagree, and if you vote against it, you vote against it. Councilor Feltner. Well, I just, I just empathize with um, 
for Councillor Falcoff's point, for clarity, because I, persons, uh, individuals are not planting public trees, as far as I know. They'd have to work in conjunction with one of the departments and a nonprofit, and um, so. Uh, this is not the persons are not planting public trees, but they're planting trees in their backyard. That's the intent of this. Just. Yes, and we're still tracking those. So we can't. Only. How can you? you say, I, I'm going to ask that we. The way that we just okay, the hold on. We have a, a, a motion and a second on an amendment. Any other comments on the amendment? All those in favor of the amendment? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Opposed. Opposed. No. <laughs> Fails. On the, on the motion as first presented, are there any other comments? All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? The ayes have it. Thank you. New business. Any new business to come before the council? We're not allowed. Seeing none. Communications from the town manager. 12A is a regional electric scooters and referral to the Committee on Economic Development and Planning. Mr. Magoon. Thank you, Mr. President. Uh, as you know, the correspondence is contained in the uh, council package. Uh, Laura Wiener, the transportation planner, has been working with uh, MAPC, uh, Cambridge and uh, Boston and Somerville on uh, looking at the option for having uh, scooters and uh, wanted to have that referred to committee to uh, get some policy direction from the council in that regard. Thank you. Can I get a motion to refer to economic development and planning? So moved. Is there a second? second. Any discussion? All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? The ayes have it. 12B is a request for confirmation of appointment and reappointments to the Conservation Commission. Mr. Magoon. Thank you, Mr. President. Uh, the first one is uh, appointment and reappointments to the Conservation Commission according to the charter. Uh, this would include uh, Colleen Egan uh, term uh, to expire on February 15, 2021, Patrick Fairbarn. Uh, reappointment uh, to a term to February 15, 2022, and Charles Baring, a reappointment to February 15, 2022, and would ask that those also be referred to the Committee on Public Works for consideration. Can I get a motion to send to the Committee on Public Works? So moved. Is there a second? Second. Any discussion? All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? The ayes have it. Uh, 12C is a request for confirmation of reappointments to the Planning Board. Mr. Magoon. Uh, thank you, Mr. President. Uh, as, as you said, reappointments to the Planning Board include Gary Shaw for a term to expire on February 15, 2022, and Janet Buck also uh, for a term to expire February 15, 2022, and ask for that to be referred to the Committee on Economic Development and Planning for review uh, and referral back to the Council. Can I get a motion to refer to Economic Development and Planning? So moved. Is there a second? Second. Any discussion? All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Susan, you get your voice back. <laughs> I think you're going to have to 12 D is a, confirmation, a request for confirmation of appointment and reappointment to the Zoning Board of Appeals. Mr. Magoon. Thank you, Mr. President. Uh, again, appointment and reappointment to ZBA. Uh, the first would be a new alternate member, Francis Guiz Floor, who would be appointed for a term to expire on February 15, 2021. And then a full member, a reappointment of David Ferris uh, for a term to uh, expire on February 15, 2024. And both of those uh, requests they be referred to the Committee on Econo Economic Development and Planning for a review and report back to the Council. Can I get a motion? So moved. Is there a second? Second. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? <coughs> the ayes have it. 12E is a request for confirmation of reappointments to the Traffic Commission. Thank you, Mr. President. Uh, again, reappointments to the Traffic Commission. John Rajan for a, a term to expire May 15, 2020, and Kelly Gallagher, uh, an appointment, a reappointment to expire on May 15, 2021. And we ask that those be referred to the Committee on Public Safety uh, for their review and report back to the full council. Can I get a motion on the reappointments to the Traffic Commission to Committee on Public Safety. So moved. Is there a second? Second. Any discussion? All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? 
Yes, have it. Any other communications, Mr. Magoon? No, that would do it. Thank you. Thank you. Request for information. Any requests for information? Councilor Canales. Uh, thank you. Um, recently, I've sent off uh, two um, requests for follow-up to DPW uh, that were initiated by residents. Uh, one is for uh, a planting strip on Keenan Street and the other is for the neglected uh, raised planting beds on Arsenal Street. Uh, those two requests for follow-up were also copied to the administration, and I will forward them to the council clerk um, to be included in the minutes of this evening. Thank you. Are there any other requests for information? Announcements. Any announcements? Councilor Feltner. Uh, thank you. I just want to remind everybody that at tomorrow night's uh, planning board at 7 p.m., 101 to 103 Moore Street conversion to 37 units proposal will be presented and discussed at planning board, and um, everyone's invited to attend as usual. Thank you. Any other announcements? I just have a uh, couple things. First of all, um, we've had a couple of bad Wednesdays for our farmers market and I'm encouraging people to please step out if the weather's good tomorrow and it's supposed to be to come and enjoy some of the uh, things that they have to offer uh, it's a good take it was going well and then the last two or three Wednesdays haven't gone so well um, and the other thing that I want to mention and I think it's worth mentioning the school building committee is now in the cost estimating phase for the design and renovation of the three elementary schools. Um, that's going to take a few weeks. That's an exciting development. We've you completed uh, the exterior design work and uh, we're looking forward to what those, are gonna, what those results will be. And then next Tuesday, the town of Watertown is going to be in front of the MSBA in the designer review uh, process looking for a designer, an architect for the high school. It's a process that the MSBA lays out. Uh, it's a 15 member board. The town of Watertown is represented by the town manager, the superintendent of schools and myself. Um, it's open to the public, but no public comments are allowed. Um, so that's another exciting step moving forward with the MSBA for the high school. So I just wanted to announce those two items. If there is nothing else, public forum. Yes. Michelle Kokenauer, 37 Paul Street. <coughs> and I had a comment about uh, open meeting law and, and meeting minutes. Um, meeting minutes are not required to be verbatim, but they are required to include enough language that for someone not attending the meeting to know what happened at that meeting. And I've noticed on several occasions where some meeting minutes have failed to produce that. Um, and then the other thing I wanted to comment on was the uh, follow-up to uh, uh, open forum. I was wondering if there might be a possibility of interfering with an individual counselor um, in addition to uh, the president's process following up themselves independently. Thank you, anyone else? Can I get a motion to adjourn? So moved. Is there a second? Second. <laughs> All those in favor? Aye. Opposed? The ayes have it. Thank you, Susan. <laughs>